do you defeat the brutal Somali group Al-Shabaab? Earlier this month, the U.S. used both manned aircraft and drones to kill more than 150 suspected Al-Shabaab fighters. But do such airstrikes create more enemies than they kill? To debate this, I'm joined by Abu Kar Arman, Somalia's former special envoy to the U.S., who has said drone strikes are a priceless propaganda tool for Al-Shabaab. And from Nairobi, Ahmed Abdesalam Aden, Somalia's former deputy prime minister, who is a supporter of such strikes. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining me in the arena. Um, Ahmed Abdesalam Aden, I want to begin by asking you this. In 2012, you were almost killed, I believe, by an Al-Shabaab suicide bomber in Somalia. Uh, two members of parliament were murdered in that attack. I'm guessing you don't shed any tears when Americans attack uh, Al-Shabaab fighters with drones. No, but it's more than me. It is, it is, uh, it's the fact that uh, this problem has been ongoing for the last several years in Somalia. And it is uh, a problem that was brought to Somalia, not Somalis who went out and, and, and found Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab came to Somalia and, and, and with the intent to destroy it. Uh, and I think that's why I believe we have to use every mechanism that we have to fight them. Uh, the fact that uh, the drones are targeting their leadership and they cannot uh, organize as much as they want, that in itself is, is useful. But this is a war. I mean, uh, we cannot just sit uh, idly and say, you know, uh, this is propaganda for, for, for Shoab. Shoab are there, propaganda or otherwise. Uh, okay. They are here to destroy the Somali people. Uh, Abu Kar Arman. It's a war. You have to kill your enemies, regardless of whatever propaganda value they may take from the way you kill them. Shabab needs to be taken out. Nobody questions that. Everybody wants to do that. They wreak havoc, whether it is in Somalia, whether it is in East Africa or throughout the world. Now they're going transnational. The, the issue is what are the causing elements that really uh, uh, perpetuate this problem? That is the key issue. 2007, with all due respect, we had maximum of 2,000 al-Shabaab. And I have written extensively about that. You can, you can so go back So you think the numbers have that. increased? The numbers definitely increased. And then what is and the cause? In your view, what's the cause? And what's in your There's view no the question. cause? And what's in your view the cause well, of those numbers the going up? Well, the causes are many. You have people who are 70% of, of the Somali population, youth, are not employed. These guys provide them monthly payments. Okay. Cell phones and all of that. If I may, very uh, briefly. Uh, yeah, and then you have uh, and, and clans who are historically oppressed, who have grievances against so the, you want to focus the clan on the dominance as a way of fighting. Sure, ourselves. you have to understand who you're dealing with. Ah Ahmed Abdesalam, and you want to come back Let in. Let me interject. We've done this. I was, as a member of the Somali government at that time, as the leader of the peace process, I was the one who offered not just the Shabab, any Somali who was against. Uh, the Somali government to any clan who had grievance. That's why we had the Djibouti peace process. Shabab did not come for grievance. Shabab did not come because there is an Islamic issue. Shabab came as an international jazz organization. It's an extremist organization. This is an organized, motivated, well-resourced organization that's fighting us. Clans with grievances have left al-Shabaab to join the government. They were not even sure if the government was going to compromise that decision of theirs Do you think that was a good decision? So what they decided was to go to Amisom and, and, and surrender to the Amisom. African Union military Those 450 Somalia. members of al-Shabaab left. They were not because they were hardcore Shabaab. They were clans who had so you grievances. would like to see more of that? You I would, would like, like to see more of, see more of away that. Absolutely. the people who are not hardcore. Absolutely. And do you think that al-Shabaab is a product of governmental failure? Have the Somali political ruling class, uh, people like uh, Ahmed Abdesalam Aden, do you fault him and people like him for creating this problem? Oh, most definitely. The period that he, the minister is talking about is the period that the Ethiopian occupation took place in Somalia. 20,000, this is the conservative estimate, Somalis were killed in there under that occupation. Human rights violations left and right that are well documented both by Human Rights Watch and, and that Amnesty. boosted Al Shabaab in your of view. Of course. Okay, that let, is part of the narrative that they are. Okay, well, let, 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 the former deputy, let the former Deputy that, Prime Minister yeah, come back in. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, that period is when we facilitated the exit of Ethiopian troops out of Somalia. 
That is when we had an agreement in Djibouti, when we provided all the facilities to the to those With who were fighting us. With all due respect, us. there is no you, such you thing as a facilitation of Ethiopian exit. Okay, okay. Well, before we before we argue over the Ethiopian intervention from almost a decade ago, uh, yeah. Ahmed Abdeslam, I'd deal with the broader point before we finish that this is a failure of governance in Somalia. That politicians, ministers have let down the Somali people, and you, rightly or wrongly, are part no, of that political class. No, I, I disagree with that. That's not the case. This is the failure of, you know, Somalia has been without the government for 20 years. This is, a, it created a vulnerable space for extremists to come and, and, and to organize in Somalia. That's why they are fighting in Somalia. That's why they're taking advantage of the weakness uh, of Somalis had without the government. You know, when you talk about political Somalis, Somalis uh, had no government, had no politicians. Somalis uh, had no institutions. That is what allowed them to come to the country. What's happening now is a fragile situation where the Somali governments, successive governments, are trying to bring back uh, normalcy and institutions okay, we're very about to run. But we're about to run out of time. We're, we're about to run out of time. One last question to you both. Do you think Al-Shabaab will be beaten anytime soon? Uh, Abu Kar Arman. Uh, they're not going to be beaten if you don't have a true reconciliation in Somalia. You're not going to okay. have a true reconciliation in Somalia as long as Amisom is there because in Ethiopia is Baltimore. part of, of course, Ethiopia is part of that and it has a it does not see in their best interest to have united Somalia that okay. really functions as one entity. Ahmed Abdesalam Adan, is Al Shabaab going to be beaten anytime soon? I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to respond to conspiracy theories. What I know is today Al Shabaab are fighting in Punta Land where there's no Amazon force, where there's no Ethiopian force, where there's no one. They went there to this peaceful community, and the Somalis will defeat them, and they have already defeated them. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks for joining me in the arena. That's our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week.